Welcome to Piano Video Lessons, Year 1, Unit 4. First, a big shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. To find out about the benefits of becoming a patron, click the info card. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning a classical piece called A Dance by Cornelius Gurlitt and a new dynamic sign. This is video number 53 on YouTube and lesson 5 of unit 4 and if you're not already at pianovideolessons.com you should head on over there because you'll find the full index of all of the lessons and you can get printables there if you're looking for them. In our last lesson we did a finger gem that took us through the key of D major and we've been working in the key of C, key of G, and key of F major. And it's good to keep working those so that your fingers are nice and spry. Uh, we've also been learning uh, eighth notes this year, this unit, with uh, counting one and two and in order to space out the eighth notes. And in this lesson, we're going to be putting some of that together and also learning a new dynamics level. We've had forte and piano previously, loud and soft. And today I'm going to introduce you to mezzo forte. And we're going to be playing this piece called A Dance by Cornelius Gurlitt. And uh, mezzo forte means medium loud. So forte would be, you know, played with a very strong touch. Piano is played gently. When we play mezzo forte, we come somewhere in the middle. It's strong, but it isn't as strong as forte. So we're adding weight to those notes, but not so much that uh, it's got the, the most we could do. It just gives us another sort of shadow, another shading level that we could use for this. So um, you'll see it in the music indicated by MF, mezzo forte. Again, these are Italian words, mezzo meaning medium and forte meaning loud or strong and looking at this piece you can see that uh, the first line is forte the second line is piano and the last two lines are both mezzo forte and when you play it um, you're going to need to be coordinated on the fingerings and the rhythms so it's not a bad idea to get used to the rhythm first and just do some tapping so I'm going to tap both hands at the same time and I'm going to count out loud while I do. So just the first line, for example, and it goes like this. One and two and three and. 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 So you notice the left hand was on every beat, the entire line, where the right hand had some eighth note pairs, and it also had just a measure of quarter notes that tapped along with the left hand, and it had another measure where you had to hold the right for three beats through the left. So try the tapping and see if you can get that coordinated. Work line by line on that. Um, you might notice in this measure there's a new symbol, this little um, dobby thing here. This is an eighth rest. So instead of having one and two and three and all being played with notes, we're going to have one and two and three and. So that pair of eighths is a note to play and then some silence happens uh, just the once in that whole section. Now uh, the next thing that you want to do is think about the fingerings. So we're seeing fewer and fewer fingerings written in our music because we're getting more and more able to work these things out for ourselves. But you can see this piece is in C pentascale position. We start off there for sure. It may change. I'll tell you now it doesn't, but you should always look for changes. And when we look at the right hand, we see it running up by neighbors. One and two and three and. So this is just moving up the notes. Now here, you can think of this two ways. You can think of it as D, G, G, or you can think of it as two, five, five, or you can think of it as two up a fourth and repeat. So you should understand all of those ways of thinking about it, and you should start to uh, pay attention to how the how it looks on the page and how it feels in the fingerings. So uh, we can go ahead and try to play just the right hand for this. So let's go ahead and play the right hand. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. Now let's work the fingerings with both hands. So just fingers. 
on the first line, 1 and 2 and 3, and 1 and 2 and 3, and now here it's both 2's. I'm in the third measure, both 2's, and then up to G, G. So in the left hand, I'm going to go to my thumb, because that's a neighbor, and in my right hand, I'm moving up to my 5, and then repeating. So in this case, they play at the same time, but they're on different fingers and patterns. And then here in the last measure, I'm going to play G again on my right, and my left goes down one note to the space note, and skips up to G. So hopefully you did lesson number 1 in this unit, was it number one, where we reviewed all of our notes. So it's lesson number two in unit four, and you're starting to really get a quick grasp of what the letter names are. We want to be able to read two ways, in interval distances and also discrete letter names. So now we can try to play this line with both hands and count as we go. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. So we figured out how to do this hands together. Break it down into as many steps as you need. If you're still having trouble, work on one hand at a time a little extra. But now we also want to incorporate the dynamics. So we have forte for this line. So we're going to have strong playing, mostly right hand voiced because this is your melody. Here we go. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. Did you notice the slurs? The slurs tell us to play legato underneath these notes in the right hand and above these notes in the left hand. So we're going to listen again and see if we hear that connected sound. One and two and three. So right hand connected for the entire measure. The left hand is replaying G and it lifts between. Obviously you can't play the note again until you've lifted it. Same thing for the second measure. Now to keep that same pattern going in the left hand, we're going to actually do the same in the right. So from here when we play both finger twos up to G, we're going to lift and then we're going to play E and the same pattern in the left hand. Now the next line is almost identical, but we're going to play it piano and the only change is going to be right at the end, um, the C in the right and the C in the left for three beats. So let's try line two and play it quietly. Okay, on the next line, we're going to play mezzo forte, but first let's figure this out. Fingering, we're going to have two up, two up, two, one up, one up, one, four up, four up, four, three up, three up, three. So this is a very regular pattern of playing the note with its neighbor. One up, one up, one, four, and three. And something similar but different is going to happen on the next line. So now let's see what happens in the left hand here. We're going to have two, one, one, three, one, one, four, one, one, five, one, one. We can try that on the piano. Two, one, one, three, one, one, four, one, one, five, one, one. So I'm sure you've noticed, but I'll point it out anyway. You should be reading your music in chunks. You should try not to read it note by note by note. You should start to understand what you're doing in one measure at a time, in maybe even bigger sections than that if the music is more simple. But in this case, it's good to look at the one, one um, measure. So just try the fingerings here. I'm not going to play out loud, but it's going to go two, three, two, three, two in the right. And left hand is going two, one, one. So just get the feeling of that, keeping the beat steady. Now let's try to play it. Try it a few times if you need to. Start with your twos. Left hand changes to one and repeats it. Getting that independence between your hands can be a challenge, especially if you're an older beginner. Now with the next measure, the right is going to play one, two, one. Uh, one, two, one, two, one, and the left hand is going to go three, one, one. So now we can try to touch through that just to feel it just ghosting on the keys, and now we'll try to play it. 
Now, if that's tricky for you, slow it down a lot. The secret to playing well is to play easy. And that means easy for you. So if you need to slow it down so much to coordinate it, do it and then do it again. It'll get easier the second time. Keep it super slow. Whoop. Keep it really slow. And then you might feel like easy can go faster. Okay, next measure in the right, I'll keep it down here, is four, five, four, five, four. Now this is the weaker part of your hand, and for beginners, sometimes it gets a little uneven. So try to play those notes so that they're steady and they don't do something like this. You want to really control your hand. And you can do something with your wrists to help with that. You can lift it up and down. So down, up, down, up, down. And then try the left hand. It's going to go four, one, one. You can play that out loud. Now you're going to start with both fours at the same time. You could have fingered that out silently first. But really get it easy. And now maybe you want to comb through all three of those measures just to see how they feel putting them together. Maybe that's comfortable. If it is, keep on going. So we're going to have three, up, down, up, down, and five, one, one, and both together. This is sometimes feels like, you know, chewing gum while patting your head and rubbing your belly. You can do it, but you just have to do it slowly. Think about one hand more than the other. So maybe you just think of the right hand. Then just think of the left hand. Five, one, one. Do it so slowly. Importantly, make sure the notes sound together. Don't let them stagger when they're supposed to play together. Line them up. And then let's try the whole line. So we know this piece is in 3-4 time, and you can hear that the downbeat on beat number one is stronger on the one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three. All right, so this last line is going to start off with two on D. It doesn't have a finger number, but I'm still on D. That's always been finger two in this case. Um, so we're going to have two up, up, down, down, and one up, up, down, down. See that pattern? Two up, up, down, down, one up, up, down, down. Now notice I'm also moving my wrist along with my fingers. I'm not trying to stay rigid here, adding tension to my wrist. I'm just going to rotate over and down. And then we have something like the first line, oh, something like the second line, ending. And then we can do the left hand alone. We're going to have two, one, one, three, one, one, four, one, one, five. So that's the exact same left hand as the line previous until the final measure when we play C. So let's try that together. We could just finger it out just on the keys here, checking all the fingers. And if that feels good, then you're ready to try playing it. Maybe go nice and slowly. So playing through the entire piece, the first line is forte. So I'm using strong fingers. Next line is piano. Now mezzo forte, in between. Still mezzo forte. Time, I have started to develop the feeling that for me, mezzo forte is just the natural amount of weight that I play with without effort. So if I'm going forte, I add effort. If I'm going piano, I back off on effort. But just normal playing to me is mezzo forte. 
All right, so practice this piece until you can play it fluidly and easily, and what's going to happen next is something crazy. So you need to know this piece really well before you try the next lesson, but we're going to learn to play a dance in different keys, even though we don't have the music for it. So check back in lesson 54, lesson 6, video 54, and uh, be sure to click like if you thought this lesson was helpful, and subscribe if you would like to see more piano video lessons. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.